let's uh, let's get started. I'll officially uh, call our meeting to order, and uh, we'll reflect uh, that all of the board members are here, as well as a number of staff members, uh, including uh, our great uh, town attorney, Mr. Richard Horowitz. Uh, I'll uh, I'll entertain a motion of approval for the March 26 uh, meeting minutes. I'll move. It's been second. moved. Second. It's been seconded. Um, any discussion? I will say that uh, I was not at that meeting, but uh, have reviewed the minutes and uh, am prepared to uh, vote for them. So, uh, seeing no further comments, uh, the minutes will stand approved uh, by uh, by the entire board. Uh, monthly reports. Uh, all the monthly reports are due. Uh, actually. Mr. Costello, thank you, <laughs> are actually due tomorrow. So Mr. Costello is ahead of time. Uh, and I think there's only one or two, one or two that are outstanding, and I'm sure the rest of those will be in uh, by end of day tomorrow. Uh, we have no public hearings, uh, and we have several guests this evening. I'm going to start with Mr. Costello. If he would uh, do the intros of our first guest, thank you, and then Mr. we'll get to our second guest after that. Sounds good. With us tonight, we have Tracy Boyce. Tracy contacted me a while back. He was interested in uh, opening up a uh, graphic arts or graphic design studio. Um, I'm going to let you talk about that in a minute. Okay. But um, this is the, the property that was previously the incognito um, tux shop mm -hmm. on uh, 2108 Five Mile Lane Road. And with that, Tracy, why don't you tell the board what you'd like to do? Um, well, I'll be offering graphic design services as well as a wide format. I specialize in wide format printing. I've been doing this for about 14 years now. Um, the company that I was with, we're dividing into two companies and I'm basically taking over the production end of it and starting on my own. And um, I'm really excited. <laughs> um, I've been not sleeping, waiting for this meeting. But, <laughs> <laughs> I have that feeling almost every day myself. <laughs> That's right. But um, I am I am a professional, and I do think that the location is a great location for what I have to offer, and I think it will benefit just the community, the Penfield community, and the surrounding communities. Um, a service that I think can be used in our community. Um, and I also live in Penfield, so I'm all for it. Can you tell the board a little bit about uh, the inner workings of the pro of the business, hours of operation, number of employees? I know you wrote um, it all down yep. for us. Um, hours of operation will be standard 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. And Saturdays, I'll probably work a shorter day, 10, 10 to 4. Um, and I'm not going to open on Sunday. Uh, mm -hmm. I need a day off. <laughs> To hang out with that little dude over there. Oh, perfect. Um, perfect. <laughs> he gets a day. <laughs> he gets a day. <laughs> um, as far as employees, right now I'm going to be running it solely, and I'm sure I'll look into hiring a helper. Um, but I think for the beginning, the transition transition stages, um, I'm going to keep doing what I do, and I, I'm doing it on my own now. I just have someone there to order things if I need to be ordered. So okay. for now, it'll be just myself. So will it be open to the public, so to speak, where you'll have, you know, people can walk in if they have printing needs, or oh, is it most, more just? Yep, no, okay. most definitely. Um, we have very few walk-ins where we are now, but because we're in a disclosed sort of area. So, you know, my vision that that first room that you walk in is going to be the welcoming room where my desk will be set up and and anyone can walk in and ask what I do and they can see what's being done. Um, so it is welcome for walk-ins, but I do have a client base that's Already. been with the company, yeah, for how, over 20 years. How many, employ how many uh, uh, visitors a day would you anticipate, just knowing your past history? We uh, very rarely more than five come either to pick up a job. There's never been more than three people maybe in there at once. Um, I do suspect <coughs> that maybe in the summer with the foot traffic in the village, mm. curiosity, people will mm. probably come in more. 
and you and I have been working on your sign. You're, you're going to have a sign uh, design prepared for the board to review and approve. Or I will. Um, for the time being, because being a designer and everything in my eyes has to be perfect, <laughs> um, I'm going to hold off on the exterior signage until I know what direction I'd like to go with that. Mm -hmm. um, and for the time being, I will hang an interior sign in the front window mm -hmm. and and leave it at that for yep. for the beginning. Okay. Um, the exterior signage is pretty important. So, so give us kind of a quick um, free plug, like 30 seconds. What what do you do for whom? Is it is it like banner printing or is it bulk? Printing like you know flyers and things like that, or it's not flyers. It's wide format, so it's it's typically banners, posters mounted to foam core, um, mapping, ba banner stands. Um, I do vinyl graphics, cut vinyl that can be applied on windows, cars. Um, I do stuff like make the A-frames that you see outside of the shops in the village, um, coroplast signs. I do some outdoor signage, but you know, the digital printing end of the outdoor signage. I don't really get into the carved signs or anything like that. But a Tracy with that sign up there, would it, do you do anything like that? Well, you, I do print stuff that big. Um, that's as big as I can print. And we can print on canvas, um, so something like that. Yes and no. I don't frame. I don't do framing. <laughs> um, it's more the technical, I source the that out. technical end of the whole process. Yeah, I source a lot of the finishing yeah. work will get sourced out. Um, I just mainly print wide format and offer design services. So it sounds like you Good. wouldn't have a lot of, of business refuse as far as like the need for a large dumpster or you know just whatever's there is suitable for you now? Yeah, I think, I think Olga said I'm she I'm looking into getting a dumpster for the whole building. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but they're very expensive right now. So a shared use enclosed dumpster? Yes. So I, I would, the only thing I would say, Mrs. Boychuk, just, you know, make sure that uh, you work with Jim. I know, I know you and Jim have got a great uh, working relationship, so just work with uh, Jim uh, as to what that might look like, placement, all of those types of things. Well, isn't the is the um, excuse me isn't the town um, planning to enclose the dumpsters? We're, we're we're working on. We've got that uh, in the works uh, right now. I'm, I can't tell you that that's going to be completed in the next you know few weeks or month or so. But our ultimate goal is to get that uh, taken care of. So that's why I would say work with Jim okay. um, and uh, go from there. And I would guess, Tracy, that uh, you probably have some materials that are recyclable. Um, I do, and I really plan on utilizing scrap material and and just and trying to donate it to schools or utilize, you know, even if I just put a sign out that said I have scrap foam core, you know, come <laughs> come to check it out sure um in yeah. terms or another um i really i really try to save my materials and not have to throw, and, right, yeah. throw okay. things out okay now there are presently two doors one on the side on five mile and then one off penfield road are you going to be using both entrances i'll be using the front entrance will be for customers, customers. and okay. the side entrance will be for deliveries when I order rolls of material, they'll come in the side door. Okay. And then, are you going to be doing any other interior renovations, any structural changes for equipment? Get equipment in? No. Um, we, there was like a small wall that we were going to just take down a little bit to make room for one of my bigger tables, but I've measured everything. And other than that, I don't have to do anything in there. Well, speaking of the uh, the entrances, um, we always had a handrail similar to the one in the, on the side of the building. And is that handrail sufficient? We'll or have to talk to the building inspectors about that. If it's there right now, I'm sure it is. But we'll talk, if it's there now, I'm sure it's okay. It's a pre-existing. Well, it, it was no. Unfortunately. <coughs> The previous tenant took it and 
demolished it someplace. And <clears throat> I had um, a friend of mine, John Ferrari, um, give me an estimate on putting the same rail there. And instead, he made a mistake and put a, well, you, you can describe it better because you saw it. It's kind of like raw piping. I'm aware of it, and I, I met with the building inspector yesterday about it. He went out and visited the site, and he had no problem with it. It meets the state, I don't, meets the state I don't, requirements. I don't like it. Well, you can change it if you'd like. Just work with the building inspector to make sure it meets state standards for uh, accessibility. Can we change it back to what the original? I'd say talk to Mr. Tett, and he'll, he'll work through the process okay. with you. You'll have to come and visit the site soon anyway, so he'll do that okay. when he comes in. Okay. Board, other other questions, other comments uh, for Tracy or Mrs. Boycha? Nope, I'm Sounds good. good. Yeah. Okay. Please yeah, and then didn't stay uh, vacant for too long. Well, it's interesting. In in the beginning, it was in such horrible, horrible condition that people were um, shied away from it. The town was horrified when they came in and saw the condition of it. Since I've had it. Um, remodeled and in, in the condition that um, it is now with uh, new floors, new ceilings, new um, everything is the way it was in 1985. Um, I've had quite a few people that are quite interested. Um, even today, I had um, an insurance agent call and <clears throat> is very interested and I said, we have two already in the area. And he said, he's a farm um, uh, agent. Yep. And um, Farmers. Pardon? We think Farm farmers. Right farmers. Right. <laughs> yeah. We don't need to look any further. You made said, the right choice. I said, I have a, a client that's very, very interested. And if she doesn't take it, he said, I would like to take it. Okay. And I said, so I've had quite a few. Uh, interested people since it was cleaned up and in good condition. And I'd like to invite people right here to come and look at it now. That we, a, we will make it a point of doing that. I think uh, a number of us try to, as new businesses come in and open up, we always like to try to stick our head in and uh, welcome and say hello and right. uh, what have you. So we certainly will do that, Mrs. Boychuk. Good. All right. Good. Uh, then, uh, uh, seeing no other questions, uh, then we'll ask uh, Jim if you will uh, prepare uh, a letter, send uh, to Tracy with the uh, the standard uh, information in there. Certainly, uh, if there is any um, remodeling that requires uh, permits, uh, you know, having it inspected by the fire marshal um, at some point uh, when she's ready to put up her sign to work with yourself. And then I would also encourage, uh, you know, working with, uh, you know, from a refuse or garbage uh, collection that, uh, you know, work uh, with Mrs. Boychuk on that. Hopefully that'll be temporary, but this will be a special permit you're being issued, so you'll be getting a, a resolution in the mail from the uh, town. Okay. And, uh, I'll work with you to get it all squared away. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, good luck with the uh, yeah. the new business. Thank you. Thank you for choosing Penfield, and we appreciate it. And. Uh, Mrs. Boychuk, thank you for uh, getting your building uh, all cleaned up, and uh, looks like you've got a great tenant. I, I do. Okay. I do, and, I, and she's my neighbor across the street. <laughs> That's uh, even better, right? <laughs> 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 she she walked like, when I called and she answered, I said, I'm sorry, I think I have the wrong number because I know her voice. <laughs> and I was like, I'm just calling about, you know, the space for rent and the village of Penfield. And she's like, no, this is the right number. And I said, is this Olga? <laughs> she yelled out your front door. I know. <laughs> there you go. The string. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, well, good luck. It's and interesting it's because Tracy remodeled the house across the street and did beautiful work in, in gardening and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, so, it all out. <laughs> I, I know she'll do a great job at the Four Corners. Excellent. Right. Well, well, welcome. Well, thank welcome. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Boychuk. Tracy, thank you very much. And, uh, and to the dude as well. <laughs> what? All right. <laughs> okay. We're all set. Thank you very much. And then uh, just stay in contact with Jim. Okay. Okay. Very good. So leave these for the next. Uh, if you you're, you're feel free to take them if you'd like a copy. Uh, you, we do have extras. 
Okay. All right. And uh, so as Tracy and uh, and her uh, her team are uh, exiting, I would ask uh, Dr. Renee if uh, she would uh, come forward, please. How are you? Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> okay. So uh, welcome. And uh, if, uh, as uh, you heard, uh, Mr. Costello. I indicate on the uh, the previous uh, uh, visitor, if you just kind of give an overview, we do have your write up that you provided. Thank you very much. Oh, no, no. But if you would just give an overview of uh, what you're looking to do and um, the location, uh, former Dr. Herman's uh, property, but give us a little overview of uh, of uh, your business and uh, and again, welcome. Thank you. Um, I've been an orthodontist. I worked with Dr. Uh, Bradley Hoffman over in uh, Brighton Henrietta area. Um, for four years, and I've been in contact with Dr. Herman for a while, and he agreed to sell his practice to me. Um, he's staying on for a six-month transition, so he will be here until September, until baby number two uh, comes, <laughs> comes to fruition. And um, basically, um, it's, it's the same location, same house. Dr. Mike Pignato owns the building. Um, I do have a sign made, but was working on some minor details, so I'm meeting, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was just working with coloring and font and stuff, but that's the generalized sign that I'm going to be having um, made. I ha just didn't have the minor details, so I couldn't make the historical meeting, so I'll be meeting with them in May, and then mm -hmm. once the sign's approved, um, I'll be having the sign redone. Um, as for remodeling, um, I'm currently in the process of purchasing a new panoramic, digital panoramic machine for digital x-rays. Um, I'm installing new computers just to make things more digital and a little bit more up to date with how you know I'm doing, but no structural changes at this point. So chairs, walls, pretty much decor, everything like that is pretty much staying the same. Are you taking on Dr. Herman's staff as well? They are all agreed to stay. Okay, so all so, four so of you them. have any, any more than them or just the kind of- If my practice thing? grows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would hope to, um, to want their three full time, one is part time. So if practice grows, the part time employee would agree to, to work full time um, or open Monday through Thursday, 8 to 5, which is pretty much consistent with Dr. Herman's mm -hmm. um, hours. And if it grows, then great, you know, I'd love to hire more people, but for right now, that's good. <laughs> and I'm sure Dr. Herman and Dr. Pignato may be aware of the fact that there's cross parking, cross access agreements yeah. in the property, so you're sharing yeah. parking with everybody else. Yes, I have spoken with Dr. Pignato about um, purchasing the building, but I um, opted to lease for the time being, um, just with other things going on. But yeah, we have talked about a variety okay. of that stuff. Thank you. We're talking about dumpsters. Is there a shared dumpster for those properties? Yes. There, well, actually, Dr. Pignano is in the process this week of installing a new dumpster pad. Well, he's got the pad in place. He's putting a new fencing around it to buffer it from the neighbors. And I'm not certain. I can't remember if there's one on your property. I, I, we I share the one with um, Dr. Merkley. That's right. Yeah. So, so it's yeah, the I'm same sure. dumpster for Merkley and yourself, but not Five Mile Line Road Cafe. Yeah, I believe it is. Think it is yeah. Okay, so they're five mile line yeah, road cafe what, as well. That's what generated the yeah. uh, the thought process for right. installing all, all the back. Got not all properties, so right? Speak. So yeah. they'll be in good shape probably in the next couple of weeks. Very good. Okay, that no, sounds great. Sounds really easy too. Just transitioning yeah, over. Transition. Yeah. Good yeah. luck with all that. Thank you very much. And he's got a big client base. Yeah. Yes. Perfect <laughs> teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, yeah. when when are you when did, when's your plan to uh, open up? Uh, actually, I had no idea I had to attend this meeting, so we closed uh, March 14th, and I owned it as of last week, Monday. Okay, so, so as of uh, as I of Monday. I apologize for that, yeah, thank you. but, uh, <laughs> but yeah. Well, that's what the, the streamlining process is yeah. for. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that yeah, certainly fits right. in very much with the streamlining <clears throat> process of the same type of operation. Yeah. It's encouraged it's to, you know, move people through efficiently. Okay. Other questions, comments? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, Jim will uh, prepare a, a letter. Uh, it'll be a, an approval letter for a special uh, special permit, and uh, it'll have the the usual, you know, the sign, you know, if, uh, you know, getting a sign permit, and if you're doing any remodeling, which it sounds like you're not, uh, other than just doing up some upgrade of uh, equipment, computers, and things like that, 
and, uh, and I would just uh, encourage you to just work with uh, Mr. Costello, especially on the on the sign itself, uh, and uh, get that all all squared away. All right, board. Anything else uh, no, for uh, for the doctor or for Mr. Costello? All right. No. Great. Welcome. Thank Welcome. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you very much. Have a All right. You too. Thank you. Okay. We will uh, move on to uh, lawn finance ac action items. Uh, first item is uh, Panera Bread. Uh, Mr. Castell. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, at their last meeting, um, we had discussed uh, the Panera Bread application. Um, Two weeks ago, it seems like it was yesterday. But in any event, since that point in time, as you know, Mr. Benway and myself had some concerns right. really related to the internal flow of traffic throughout the project. Uh, Supervisor and Mr. Uh, Benway and myself met with Adam last Friday. Uh, we came to a consensus as to how we should try to get to uh, provide a safer access to the parking area. And Took our comments to heart, went back and we drew a plan to accommodate our needs. We sent that plan to Jeff and I late this afternoon. I met with Jeff. See and I both agree that it's exactly what we we're looking for in terms of uh, safety issues. So our recommendation to you is the plan that he's proposing this evening um, be the plan that we would support for approval. Uh, can you just highlight for us just what changes were made sure. from what we saw before just to kind of bring us up to speed as to uh, what's more in the current? Yep. Uh, well, I, just, I have the other layout on the other side of the board if you want to see that too. Um, the other layout, the initial layout, had the drive through coming in um, this way and looping around the building in sort of a, a J shape. Mm -hmm. And it had um, some parking here that was isolated and also had a dead end, so it didn't provide any kind of circulation. That was one of the concerns that Mr. Castell and Mr. Benway, excuse me, uh, had, and as well as uh, supervisor uh, on that. Um, we also had parking along the shared access drive. That was another concern. Uh, Mr. Benway had a concern about the dead end traffic here, mm -hmm. uh, but the idea through our coordination discussion that this shared access, this drive would then be extended via shared access thereby eliminating that dead end concern. Um, some of the items that have changed, uh, we have straightened out the drive through. Mm -hmm. We still maintain a, an isolated uh, drive through stack for the Panera operations. Uh, the dumpster enclosure used to be right in this corner. We have mm -hmm. slid it over here. Um, and 250, look. is it? No, 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 no 250 no. is over here. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, that's... In the, in now, Jim, Jim was talking about putting it up towards Well, we looked at that as an option. Actually, I went out and looked at it after I met with you, and uh, he was right. I mean, the grade there, there is a change in grade, but you could still actually see it mm -hmm. um, right. as you drove by. Yeah. If you're looking for it, you could see it. So I, I think what he's done is he's actually been able to create more controlled parking in that situation. So right now it's in, uh, beyond the parking lot? It's in the back, back corner of the parking lot. But it's enclosed. It's yeah. still enclosed. It's still, it's still the same. Do you have landscaping here. around it? There will be. We haven't reworked this yet. Right. But we wanted to make sure we have the boards by yeah. before we take that next step. Okay. Um, other changes. Uh, we've gone to a 9 by 18 size parking mm -hmm. stall. So we'll need a waiver from the town board because the standard is 9 by 20. Mm -hmm. um, and that helped us maintain mm -hmm. the same number of parking mm -hmm. spaces within this uh, configuration for the site. Um, another change was that we shifted the building towards 250 as suggested by the town. Um, that eliminated the parking along this area here. The patio and main entrance are still facing uh, Route 250. That's uh, good for visibility. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the best side of our building, these, these two sides here. Um, the ADA parking is still on the south side. Uh, we still maintain the cross access for pedestrians. Uh, through the parking lot via uh, a striped area here that's five feet wide and a six foot wide sidewalk. Uh, we have eliminated the, sh the parking along the shared access aisle and we have also eliminated the 12 uh, shared spaces mm -hmm. on the offsite development. So all told, the main access points are still the same. We still provide across access. We still maintain the same amount of parking spaces that Panera deems appropriate, which is 58. Uh, we still maintain the desired uh, number of stacked cars mm -hmm. in the stack that's, again, isolated from any kind of cross access. And we still maintain the location of the desired, the, the desired location of the mini board for the operations. 
definitely looks like an improvement as Most far as the, the flow, mm -hmm. the safety, um, public safety access mm -hmm. in terms of um, emergency access. Yeah, I think that um, I think it's considerably better than what we saw the other day. And you know, my first Im impression is it's much more structured uh, versus the one that we saw, the last version that we saw that seemed like there could be a lot of zig and zagging and people going in different directions. Yeah, Absolutely. We didn't support that one. Yeah, okay. and so this was a after discussion between yep. Mr. Castello, Benway, Supervisor of the Fountain, uh, and the developer. This is what we came up with to mm -hmm. yeah. Meet, well, meet the goals of the town as well right. as meet the other. And we really like it because it's got a two-way traffic uh, paralleling Route 250, which, as the other properties develop, will continue that on entire mm -hmm. route together, which will give them an out if they need it. So, and there's still a sidewalk. We we discussed moving mm -hmm. the sidewalk down here. This point for grading is is very tight, um, so we're we're asking that we maintain this alignment for the sidewalk and we put in some railing here as mm -hmm. it sort of drops off. But what this does is it actually allows for the continuation of that sidewalk through the future development because as you look down to, from 250 to the site, mm -hmm. it's a bit, you know, a bit of a drop until you get back up the hill mm -hmm. on the other side of the park. And the PRC did uh, look at the possibility of putting sidewalks down there. We agreed with you the grade change is a little tight. Yeah. The other part of that is we want to get some green space along there because the sidewalk is along the other side of the road. Um, there, it was just, there was just not enough green in there to make it look nice, so mm -hmm. I think this is a much better improvement. I think as Adam mentioned, uh, you know, the discussion was move the building up a little bit. So if you take a look at the Jeremiah building, the Panera building, they'll be pretty, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, on that same plane uh, over overall. Um, and and as he indicated, the you know the importance of uh, that westerly face and the southerly face being you know the two key uh, components of that uh, of that uh, Panera statement uh, or or, or uh, signage. Adam did send in a. Um, Revised exterior lighting plan for both the Jeremiah's and this site. Um, I sent that off to you. you, did. you did. And not, not to, for this site, Jen. Oh, it was Jeremiah's. It was only Jeremiah's. I think we're looking for uniform yes, lighting. Yes, we haven't re reworked the lighting for this one. Right. Okay. The new lighting will be the new lighting for this will reflect the amended lighting for Jeremiah's. Very, yes, exactly. The same, exactly. Consistent exactly. With the same lighting structure. And I've got uh, yeah. uh, Tony. Tony asked that I would talk to. Uh, AJ has gave out lighting, you know, the lighting plan. That's his business, so he's doing that for me right now. And it's shoebox lighting, I'm sure it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Is this the last thing? Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, as he says, we'll be working with a final landscaping plan to, you know, to show you what you want to do once he gets a chance to get everything back together. But, right. but I think we're pretty happy with what he's come up with. Is well, the final what design. more do we need before we do a resolution? Just. Not much. I mean, if you want to direct me to do the resolution, everything else will be conditions of approval that yeah. he has to comply with. What about with. The, the signage issue? There's, they're asking for more signage than... If you feel comfortable granting more signage, you can do that. If you don't feel comfortable, you don't have to. Well, we should be consistent. What was the yeah. result of Jeremiah's? Right. Jeremiah's right now is only asking for a sign. Um, I believe they're asking for two signs. They're asking for a sign because there are entrances or there are entrances to their buildings to the interior. Yeah. So they're gonna have a sign over there that's saying Jeremiah's, mm -hmm. but I think they're gonna have a freestanding sign attached to the wall uh, that will say Jeremiah's that you'll see from the street. On the two fifty. Right. So that wouldn't be that different than what they're asking because they're asking for a two sided one on right? I thought it was three, wasn't it? Was I don't three? have the, the sign package in front mm -hmm. of me, but I know these are their two fronts where they're asking for signage yeah. on and then they're mm -hmm. We discussed the uh, directory right. sure right. so be a, a separate and, and one of the conditions would be that you review the sign package to mm -hmm. ensure that it's okay. what we can move We can move with. forward without the final Absolutely. detail of the signage. That will be those will be conditions of approval right. and we'll just bring back to you sure. to sign off or you guess. Otherwise, like almost spent. We dealt with everything, right? The, the as far as the uh, landscaping, he's going to go back and talk to our landscape architect. He is, and also they've agreed to, and, we, and I also requested it's in the resolution that they look at working with us and the neighbor who expressed concern for getting some training. Right. And mm -hmm. Just for the board's uh, information, I did receive uh, information the other night indicating that there's interest in putting a, a medical office building in the back there, mm -hmm. which will require additional landscaping as well. Sure. So. Mm -hmm. Right, it was time well spent. Well, time well spent. I think we're ready. So, uh, if uh, board, if you're comfortable, then um, we would direct uh, Mr. Costello to uh, prepare a draft resolution uh, for us to take a look at. 
Um, if uh, the board is comfortable, uh, then that uh, draft resolution uh, would be uh, placed on the uh, February. Yeah. April. Yeah. April. I want to revert back to winter because I didn't have enough of it. I apologize. The <laughs> April 23rd uh, town board meeting. So. Um, Mr. Costello would uh, take the next uh, uh, 10 days or so, draft uh, draft up, let us uh, take a look at it, we'll provide yeah. feedback and uh, then place it on the agenda for the 20th. Okay, everybody's comfortable with that? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, uh, Jim, anything else uh, the board should be aware of on, on this item? No, I, I'll start formulating that resolution and get to you and if you have any questions, please let me know. We'll Modified to address the concerns. Okay. I just want to bring up quickly I had mentioned um, in a prior meeting you know, noise mitigation. We, yep. I think, addressed that, but just to make sure that you yep. include that as far as conditions. Yes, yeah, so when, when we resubmit, we'll formally document how, you know, for instance, the speakers are controlled inside yeah. and the, the configuration for the outdoor music type. Yeah. We actually went to the site in Parrington two Fridays ago uh, to look at noise issues, to look at traffic flows, that type of thing. And actually, we were we were waiting to hear responses from the uh, from the inside. You couldn't hear anything. Just and I was there what a half an hour after you guys were testing the drive-through. Yeah, so I was hungry, but I was <laughs> <just gonna laughs> dive there. They're not. Everybody had different motives. The the the, the, <laughs> the, uh, the speaker is quite quite quiet. Yeah, it is. I and, yep. and directed. Yep. On an angle. Um, we couldn't hear it off site, so it shouldn't be a problem. But just to make sure that that's covered. Okay. Yep, no, that's a good point, Paul. Thank you. Okay, um, anything else uh, from the applicant's uh, side, uh, Adam, that uh, you believe uh, needs to be put on the table that uh, we haven't already discussed? Mm, no, I don't think so. Okay, all right. Then we'll uh, look forward to getting a draft resolution uh, for the uh, April 23rd uh, meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thanks. No problem. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll now move on to uh, South Point Marine Expansion. That's our action item uh, number two, uh, final scoping outline uh, determination. And um, we'll uh, open that up. There's, I'm sure there's a number of uh, discussion points um, on this. Uh, so uh, we'll just uh, open it up for general conversation. Uh, by the board. Uh, so I'll, I'll kind of set the stage um, a little bit. Uh, first, first and foremost, um, I'd like to uh, thank um, everyone that has uh, commented uh, on this uh, particular project. We have gotten a number of comments that have come in uh, from a number of different uh, folks. Some are duplicate, uh, but uh, that uh, is part of that whole process where we want to make sure that uh, items are in fact uh, submitted uh, for, you know, for review uh, by the board. So the board has had an opportunity to look at all those comments uh, that, uh, that have come on. You know, everybody has uh, copies of all of that, so uh, that's good to, to have that in hand. And I think the, uh, you know, the next discussion <coughs> now is, is that uh, we're, we're looking to put together that final scoping outline and, uh, and uh, just uh, uh, directing uh, staff, or at least in this case, Mr. Costello, uh, as our staff of one, uh, to um, uh, to work on that. So, um, we'll just entertain any any discussion or, or comments uh, regarding those items that uh, that have been uh, submitted. Well, yeah, I was. Uh, I'm sorry. Mark. Can I, yeah. Okay. Slide. Thanks. Um, just real quickly, Jim, for you know, moving ahead on the on the scoping outline here, what we want to have put into it. You know, I read the emails and the letters that came in that you forwarded to us as, as town board members. I think there was, I think there was five residents that uh, sent in comments to us. Um, and I've always kind of stayed consistent with, um, you know, really taking a good look at traffic out there on Empire Boulevard. And I'm not going to speak for the rest of the board, but I think this entire board has um, an interest in making sure that the traffic issues are addressed in this document. And so um, I think it's imperative that we put in some type of traffic study into this document that can take a look at the issues that have been raised over a period of time uh, pertaining to this project and certainly um, the town board's interest in looking at uh, you know, the flow of traffic both coming in and out of the parcel 
and also the flow of traffic going um, on Empire Boulevard in both directions, obviously with safety in mind. So um, with that, I'd like to make sure that this document does include a, you know, a good traffic study um, that we can take a look at down the road when we start assessing all the information together. Yeah, and that's, that's in keeping with the DOT. They submitted two, two documents uh, requesting that the town <coughs> have the traffic study that was done in 2012 upgraded to reflect okay. uh, the issues associated with this project. Yeah, in, in addition to the five residents that sent in comments on this particular project, um, I know, I think Mr. Frank from the D, I know it's Mr. Frank from the Department, State Department of Transportation. Um, what is his position there? Do you know? He's an engineer. I can't remember. He's an engineer. And then Mr. Gehring is the regional director. Yes, he is. is that correct? Okay. And then Mr. Sheely? Is that, is it right? Mr. Sheely's from the DEC. DEC. Okay, thank you. So they also had comments about traffic mm -hmm. uh, concerns too. So I think that um, it's, it's just imperative that we address the traffic issues and the safety um, of that intersection in our next steps moving forward. So I'd like that to be a part of this next document. Okay. I would okay. support that too. I mean, I, certainly I acknowledge the DOT's request, but I think even if we did not have the DOT's request, this board has been consistent in our concerns that we would independently request that. So mm -hmm. I concur with the DOT's recommendation, but also right. in, the, in the lines of what Andy said, that as a board, I, I, I believe, at least as a board member, I would support that we independently would have moved forward on that anyways. Yeah, I think the one, the biggest obstacle of any development along Empire Boulevard is, well, not obstacle, but a concern would be the traffic situation because, you know, we want, we want the flow well and safely, you know, and as much as possible, um, working with the DOT. Yeah. They're not always as a... Well, the DOT is asking for board, an increased uh, that's, traffic safety. It's positive Recognizing, that. recognizing yeah. that mitigation is going to still be put in as a condition of the approval of the apartment complex. Oh, yeah. Uh, they've got to put that center term right in, which they're obviously mm -hmm. wanting to do. So. And then, Jim, the, the, the second point that I wanted to mention is, it, when I'm reading my notes, I think it was Mr. Frank from the state DOT that mentioned a little bit about stormwater mm -hmm. protection. And when you, when you look at traffic and you look at streets and so forth, stormwater protection also comes into play. They kind of complement each other. So yes. I think it's also imperative that in the traffic study, um, some stormwater protection analysis is done. That's right, and that was his recommendation, and um, they will be required, as all developers are, to uh, prepare a stormwater uh, prevention, pollution prevention plan uh, prior to construction. Well, my okay. understanding is that would be just required protocol. It is, but it, it should be addressed in the EIS. Addressing as well. it in the, yep. in right. the EIS. Yep. All right, so can we make sure that those two elements are put into this document or this request? Thank you. And just uh, for the board's uh, awareness, um, uh, we're, we're doing our, um, it's actually developed into a semi-annual um, meeting with the DOT this Friday. Mm -hmm. So we have a number of items on the agenda. This, this um, Empire Boulevard corridor has been one since I've been uh, on a supervisor that we, you know, always uh, have on the, on the docket for general discussion, what's new, anything mm -hmm. like that, and then certainly uh, with regards to this, uh, you know, current uh, application applications that we have, uh, we'll be uh, uh, talking about that on Friday as uh, as well as part of our overall discussion. Thank so, you. Okay. All right. There was um, some concerns written about historic mitigation, and we uh, we understand that Powers and Termini did a. Um, a, a a look around and found there was no historic artifacts on the area. The Office of Historic Preservation submitted an email expressing that the proposal has no um, no concerns for the proposal relating to historic preservation. And uh, regarding the trolley, I know that, that came up before, um, back when we were looking at our open space plan, the talk of the trolley. There was a trolley that ran down Empire Boulevard back in the day. But it ran down Empire Boulevard, and what was, at least to my understanding, whatever trolley bed there was, was where RG&E has come and totally re Well, there, there, the there were several, yes, yeah, so there were several letters that were brought in about the, um, the aspect of um, the trolley, mm -hmm. uh, the fact that they're on the Seaway Trail. Mm -hmm. um, 
there were some other issues because of you know the historic nature of that area with the sales landing coming through the big problem is that number one we did not identify that in the uh, in the EAF when we did parts two and three and we didn't do it for a couple of reasons number one uh, we didn't do it because Powers and Tiramisu did go through the site. Um, unfortunately, the site was graded out several years ago, both by the applicants and they were trying to regrade the property. But prior to the applicants going on site, the prior owners actually went in and disturbed the area, the adjacent area, to the water's edge. They put a parking lot in there and they dug up a lot of the area. As a matter of fact, some of the area, not in the area where the building is, but further to the east, was actually uh, dug out as a holding area for dredge material uh, so it could be dewatered prior to it being being covered over. So in talking to Powers and Tiramisu when they came in, I spent a lot of time with them. They indicated that because of the disrupted area it had been so torn up mm -hmm. that for them to find anything you'd have to dig down several feet uh, to get to any area and even that wouldn't have been virgin area that the, mm -hmm. that the Native Americans would have had materials on. So mm -hmm. they, were pretty, um, they were pretty adamant about that. The trolley area, uh, which was brought to, you know, was brought forth as one of the comments, uh, mm -hmm. was interesting in the in the sense that the trolley did go down Empire Boulevard. We've all seen the uh, float bridge trolley uh, mm -hmm. line, but that was taken up by the DOT actually when the trolley was taken out and it became a two-lane highway. And then, of course, back in the late 60s, early 70s, it became a four-lane highway, which was further disrupted. The trolley did at one time meander up through off the right of way and then go up through the hill behind DiVincenzo's property. Um, many, many years ago, the, the, the tr uh, tracks were taken up, the, the rg &E took an easement over that land. Uh, I suspect they probably had an easement along that land when the trolley was going through there. Um, that's but, separate property from... Well, it, it's part of the 1440 property. Um, mm -hmm. that, 14, that portion of the property is not going to be disturbed as part of the project um, for the apartment complex. But the problem was that area was disrupted when the RG went in and put poles in and everything else. And it, it's, it's what it is. Mm -hmm. If anything, it'll probably end up, probably be a hiking trail of some type in the future, mm -hmm. if anything. Um, in that regard, that's why we didn't spend a lot of time on the historic, uh, historic aspect of the project because we knew it had been so disrupted it just did not. Did not meet the criteria for for that. But I did contact ground as far as someone trying to study that. Is well, it's, it's just that when they do these digs, they're, they're actually going down six to eight inches or to a foot or mm -hmm. a couple feet to see if they can pick up anything yeah. uh, like from the prehistoric times. Undisturbed um, land up over by our sewer project. Right, we have that's to do that. That's undisturbed. Now, they and, study that. They and, and that's a very good point because if, if for some reason if they start digging and they find something, they have to stop. Right. I mean, it's right. a state law. You have yeah. to stop, and the appropriate officials have mm -hmm. to be contacted, and nothing can continue until that's resolved. So, that itself would be, you know, although I suspect, you know, they're not going down. They're not putting putting a basement in per se, so it's not mm -hmm. going to be an issue when they're going down very far for that building. So all of this historical data was. Um, provided to or the uh, off the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, Historic Preservation had this as part of their review. Some of the residents had sent letters on and uh, they contacted my office. I kind of talked about what the project was and various aspects of it. Um, and I did talk about all, all the features within the letter, the emails that we received because they were all good comments. And I got a letter back or an email back from my uh, Nancy Herter stating that they have no interest in so the, pursuing so, the So the state office had at its for its review, um, the concerns. Well, they they had the they, they, yes, they had the neighbors' comments, and then they contacted they're not just, me about they're not the neighbors' just comments. Making a conclusion based no, on I think I think she was open to everybody's comments. I think mm -hmm. that once she found out what the status of the, the project was and what what the details of the uh, site were, it, it sounded to me like she just wasn't going to pursue it any further. And then I received that an email after that, and the they would not. So. But they were, they were good comments, mm -hmm. interesting comments. Mm -hmm. Very good. One of the, um, something, okay. Andy mentioned Scott Seeley earlier, Sheely earlier, so I guess that's an interesting segue, but uh, Scott works with DEC, and I know DEC's been one of the agencies that sort of <coughs> talked about for good or for bad throughout this entire process, and uh, when their comments came in in the middle of March, obviously they were one of the, the ones I, I was waiting for. Um, and they mentioned in their comments about the obviously the proximity to the Eagle's Nest, 330 feet, but they sort of talked about just landside 
in their letter. And I just wanted to bring this up because I asked Jim to reach out to Scott at DEC and, and confirm whether that 330 feet was full circle or if water, if they were looking at water different right. than, than land. And, and Jim told me that they were. So if you want to just kind of confirm that. Yeah, after Rob called me, I called Scott. Uh, I was a little bit confused when I read uh, it's number two on his letter. Um, but when you read it, 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 it indicated or it gave the impression that they did not want any activity taking place in terms of the biological study occurring within 300 feet of the 330 feet of the eagle's nest, which was kind of I was kind of taken aback because the whole purpose of this exercise was to identify and benchmark the, the aquatic and terrestrial conditions in that area out there to see if there's going to be any degradation or, or change of this, the condition. So I called Scott after I talked to Rob and um, he indicated to me that anything that they do with on the water surface is fine. They, they, they can go right anywhere along the shoreline to do what they have to do for their aquatics. He was more concerned about the fact that if they got out of the boat or if they started walking towards the eagle's nest going up the hill area, that they would be concerned about any type of, you know, nervousness on the eagle's part and then have a problem. So my comment to him is would it be better if, you know, he had no problem staying in the area where the, the marina is and the area immediately adjacent to the marina, but my indication to him was I'd feel more comfortable if we were to meet on site um, you know, fairly soon to identify the area that they would want us to stay out of. Uh, the biologist has been down, down there many times, and his, he indicated that he really wouldn't have a problem doing what he had to do and, and not, you know, compromising the eagle's nest. But he's more than happy to, to do whatever the DEC requires in terms of uh, their, right, their concerns. So I'm glad you brought that up because what I would what I would suggest um, is that prior to uh, you know, proceeding with any studies that, that you, on behalf of the town board, meet with uh, the biologists in DEC just to make sure that everyone is on the same page as far as distances, uh, barriers, and, and whatever else is, is necessary in that kind of a discussion. And the right. timing, what, you know. Timeline, you exactly. Yeah, I can contact I, the biologist, I can contact the DEC, we can meet on site possibly in the last week of. Uh, April, yeah. see so it has to be done. Yeah, that's okay. a good idea. I know that the, the biologist wants to get a benchmark for this year uh, in April, so that he's going to start doing some testing, um, biological testing, in April. So I, I'm not sure that means anything in terms of you know, where you are with respect to your resolution, but he will be out doing some initial testing the last week of April just to get the process mm -hmm. going. Well, it, it, it certainly is the right thing to do, um, you know, as, as, as we uh, step through this, uh, it is the, the right thing to do to uh, gather that information, re-verify, you know, some information that was originally done in that, uh, in that area. So <clears throat> I think, uh, you know, getting started with that, and I think um, that, that clarification uh, was, was a good one, and I think, uh, thank you, Rob, for kind of, uh, you know, picking up on that and uh, kind, of, kind of pushing the, the envelope on that a little bit because it was, it was a little, it was a little misleading, and I think a first blush a little misleading right. that, uh, uh, but uh, certainly uh, getting the data within the, that 330 that was, is in the, what I'll call the water side versus the land side just seems to make um, a lot of good, uh, good sense uh, for the project overall. And to just keep the Department of Environmental Conservation their eyes and ears around the project, you know, yes. contemporaneously, and they're there to meet with you and, and see it through. Okay, very good. Um, as we uh, take a look at a, co a couple more items uh, that, I, that I think that, uh, uh, that, that are worth uh, a little broader discussion on. Uh, there's a comment regarding reduction of uh, buildings uh, from uh, 10 to 9 mm -hmm. that was brought up and uh, segmentation. Um, and, and so certainly we've got the, we've got the uh, apartment complex uh, that, uh, that we went through and approved uh, now uh, back in uh, 2012. And the you know the issue around uh, this application, the DOC application, um, there was a lot of things going on LWRP uh, and uh, a number of things, and and so I don't I don't see uh, this uh, this issue, um, but I but I, I I think it is uh, appropriate for us to take a look at uh, any cumulative uh, impacts uh, as we go through 
um, associated maybe with uh, traffic generation. We've talked a little bit about uh, that, and also stormwater management. Uh, so. Uh, we've we've covered both of those uh, earlier, but I think it's just uh, to reinforce that uh, that cumulative uh, impact. And then on the on the issue of uh, the ten to nine, um, you know, I think it uh, I think it would be um, uh, appropriate. Uh, uh, and I would ask uh, Jim maybe if you would reach out to uh, the engineer or or the applicant for the apartment. Uh, complex and uh, we've got a work session coming up on um, the 30th of this month and ask uh, you know for the applicant or the applicant's engineer to come in and uh, have some uh, broader discussion uh, because um, uh, you know going from uh, 10 to 9 if that is in fact the case um, you know that certainly uh, has some um, you know reduction uh, in that area but uh, before we speculate uh, what all that uh, is or isn't, uh, why don't we why don't we hear it uh, directly from the horse's mouth? Because I think some of that uh, is uh, part of that uh, cumulative effect, uh, you know, uh, as well, and uh, would be appropriate, uh, you know, for the DEIS. Uh, mm -hmm. So if we can get them in uh, on the 30th, I think that would be good to have uh, some of that uh, some of that dialogue, and then, then we know exactly what is or uh, isn't potentially happening. I think related to this issue, um, <clears throat> if I'm wrong, is the issue of aesthetics regarding the project. And I, my understanding is that I think they've already been addressed in terms of the, the draft scoping, the, the issue of aesthetics is yes. already in there. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, is there Trails. anything else? Trails. Trails? There was a concern in um, our comments, but also even last week, Joe Brennan from the Trails Committee brought up that he would like to see accessibility oh, okay. to the water. Yeah. Okay. And that's one of the things that our okay. local okay. waterfront development district is promoting. Thanks. And um, it seems to me that we should put in there that we, we encourage the developer to create some sort of pedestrian access to the waterfront. Yes, and you, you had brought this concern up earlier, too, and, and, and the point you make about the LWRP is a good one. The primary implementation feature of the LWRP is to get public access to the water's edge. How you do that, you know, that's up to the town to do it, but you should be trying to achieve that wherever possible. And I think you do that based on the other ones we've had. Um, Jeff Benway, our town engineer, did, after your last discussion about trails a while back, did talk to uh, Anthony and Danny Danielli about the idea of possibly granting as a condition of approval granting easements over the shoreline so the public could go in there and fish or uh, just watch birds or whatever. Now that's in addition to the uh, overlook of it that they're proposing as part of the implementation of, of, of the URP. I think the Daniellis are more willing to do that. Um, they certainly don't, I don't think at this point in time, want to spend money on boardwalks and all that stuff. That's something that we have the LWRP for to allow us to apply for grant money at, at some point in time we would do that once we can establish what, what it is we would do down there. But to get the public to the water's edge is the primary focus and, and that comment uh, was well taken and well deserved um, and should be addressed as part I of that. I think it should be access. included, um, incorporated into the scoping outline. Yes. Yeah, so so if we you know if we think about it, um, this uh, then uh, gives us yet another uh, potential outlet or access uh, point. You know, we've got the mm -hmm. sidewalks along Empire Boulevard, uh, and then as as other things happen, change, develop uh, along there, you can connect. Uh, you can connect. You have the connectability of the sidewalks. There's the internal component that kind of goes up uh, and I believe it's the DiMaggio property is that next property right. where it uh, goes up and loops around so that uh, you've got that but at uh, some point uh, you've got that potential for interconnectability as well and then uh, the access at the waterfront. Yeah. The, the one thing they probably should look at is part of the overall they've got an overall plan I think uh, I've worked with the Daniel since we started with Basils they, they were in segments of certain areas they couldn't get to at certain points in time because they didn't know what they were going to build at the time but I think there probably should just be an overall hiking plan on the properties to identify where you start, where you end, where, where you can go and where you can't. Obviously, they probably don't want anybody near the marina mm -hmm. because you got a lot of activity going on down there. But 
But certainly, I know from the west side of the property, around the back of the, uh, the restaurant, and then further to the east, and then getting into the apartment complex, and then up. Um, it should all tie together. We should have a pool. Well, that's what we had talked about as part of that uh, project uh, of approval project for the apartments was, right. you know, to continue that uh, connectability. Right. And I and I think that just reinforces, you know, what what um, Joe Brennan was saying at town board last Wednesday about, uh, you know, don't don't forget that, you know, and and I think that that is been a constant. I think yeah. not only for this board but also planning board on on those projects and that 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 ultimate accessibility. So I think the big problem that you run into is that, I mean, they, they're putting sidewalks along Empire Boulevard just for pedestrian access along the boulevard. They did put sidewalks within the project that the public's allowed to, to utilize to get the path area up to, towards the DiMaggio property, which eventually we're going to use them over, hopefully, and, and be able to tie them to the park. But the big problem right now is that uh, the path system that's down there actually goes by the Eagle's Nest, mm -hmm. and the DEC's you know, conscious of the fact that they don't want the public at that location. So the Daniels are going to re redirect their paths away from the Eagles Nest and then get it back into, the, the only way you can do it is to get it back into the project where the apartments are at this point in time. Right. The other part of that too is they're also building parkland to the town as part of that project and that will have access to that land too, so. It's okay. a cooperative effort. How much parkland is being donated back to the town? <coughs> Seven to ten acres. Okay. That just highlights for us that the LWRP, you know, demands that we obviously promote that area, promote that access, and it's our duty to continue to implement it. Well, when you think about it, the, the only way you can do the kinds of things, the things that they're asking to do, is if there's better access to the waterfront, and that's mm -hmm. why, and they agree to that, sure. and that's why they're here. Sure. All right, um, you know, as I as I just scanned down through our our uh, matrix that uh, we had identified uh, of all the different comments that uh, came in. Thank you, Linda, uh, for that uh, trail. Uh, remind me of that uh, trail. So thank you for that. Um, I think that uh, <clears throat> th th those were the those were the uh, uh, the comments that. Uh, that um, either were already included or, or discussed as part of uh, all the submissions that uh, that we had. Um, so um, you know the next the, the next uh, step is uh, um, uh, in the process uh, would be uh, for a final uh, uh, scoping outline. And uh, I would ask the board: Are we uh, based on everything that we have gathered, um, things that we have discussed with Mr. Costello, fed back to him? He's fed back to us. Uh, we had a point of, uh, of directing him to uh, uh, put together that final drafting, uh, uh, final bus scoping outline. And we review that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No that, different. That, no that, different that, uh, than any any other proposed uh, resolution that uh, might uh, come into into the board. That uh, he would prepare it. We'd review it. Yeah. And then uh, you know, uh, give an indication whether that Supported. moves forward or, or not, yes. or if it needs yes. additional information. I could take your your draft document, take your comments that you've given me, incorporate them into another document for your review. If you're happy with it, then we can classify it as a final outline. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you're happy with it, then we can pass a resolution so they can start the EIS. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Next so everybody good with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Mr. Horowitz. Uh, any any comments? Any feedback uh, from us? That anything that uh, we may have uh, we may have missed? Uh, no, I think it's been rather uh, exhaustive and complete. And uh, um, so I commend you for all the attention and work uh, in this important area, and look forward to move forward uh, with the scoping outline. Okay. Uh, for the final scope. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jim. If you will. You've been tremendous as far as feeding to us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. In a timely manner, everything for us to review, well, especially will, the will, resident comments. I will. I will. I will say every once in a while, I go up to uh, Jim's uh, desk and say, "Okay, I, I think I've got this." Uh, you know, and, and so we've had a number of offline comments and discussions uh, around this. So, just keeping all of the items and not letting anything uh, fall through the cracks. So. Um, yeah, I, and I, I just want to take a minute to thank the board too. I know that uh, um, every once in a while you guys are giving me a little jab about, uh, you know, are we taking care of this? Are we looking at that? So 
Um, all right, uh, Jim, thank you again for, for that. And just one last comment for the, for the public's information. <laughs> the, the matrix that you prepared will be part of the, FBI, of the final outline. Uh, yes. So they can see what the comments were, so when everybody knows that the comments came in, you addressed them. And, uh, yeah, no, I think that, that I think that's uh, that's great. That's the right uh, right thing to do when we keep that keep that uh, uh, there as part of the uh, overall record. So okay. Okay. Yeah. process airtight, which is important. Okay, very good. Um, nothing else uh, on that. Uh, that is uh, the end of our action items. Uh, we have no additional information items uh, this evening. Um, is there anything uh, that uh, we need to put on the table that uh, will uh, shut the town down if we don't discuss it between now and the 30th of uh, April, which is our next meeting? Yeah, I was wondering if you don't mind if we could hear about where we are with Knott's Lane. I mean, that, that right now, CP Board's been out there working on, on Penfield Road, mm -hmm. and I've gotten uh, people asking me questions about it. And uh, could you, just for uh, that, because uh, that's kind of timely right now yep, abs abs absolutely um, as you recall uh, once we uh, got the last piece of property uh, last sliver of pro property from uh, Dr. DePietro that uh, needed to uh, satisfy the requirements of the uh, DOT um, one of the things that uh, we did is we sat and took a look um, at the Mott's Lane construction um, Ronnie and his team um, uh, as well as uh, Jeff Benway, uh, myself, we sat down and we had conversations about how do we execute this. And uh, probably the biggest concern that came up, not uh, for our ability to do that work, the town's ability to do that work, but uh, CP Ward has uh, a lot of uh, larger equipment. More importantly, they've got all of the diverting the traffic equipment, signage, uh, all that stuff that they that they own, they maintain, um, that we wouldn't uh, have to rent. So what we did is we contracted with them uh, to do the curb cut onto 441, yeah. um, and uh, they will essentially uh, kind of set the set the location of that road in about uh, the first uh, 20 to 30 feet mm -hmm. and then our highway crews will pick up from there so it'll keep all of our equipment off a busy four-lane highway mm -hmm. keep our people safe um, and uh, we will we will complete the um, uh, the lane uh, from where CP Ward drops off up around and tie into the existing lot behind mm -hmm. uh, the Humphrey house and we've got some work to do with a um, kind of a, what I'll call a knee wall or a, a, a retaining wall that uh, we'll have. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we also uh, have a tie-in that we'll do from Dr. DePietro's uh, parking lot uh, right at that end right. as uh, well. So uh, CP Ward should be out of there in about uh, two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. Asphalt plants open up on uh, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's great news. Um, this will be Ronnie's uh, second job to pick up uh, that uh, he will do probably just before Memorial Day. Um, and uh, we'll get Baird Road done first and then we'll do come down and uh, we'll complete uh, Mott's Lane. So uh, a lot of people are excited. Yes, uh, I spoke yes. with, uh, happened to speak with uh, Stephanie, uh, one of the owners of uh, the Humphrey House mm -hmm. uh, yesterday and um, also a couple members of the Penfield Business Association. Yes. So they are delighted that uh, things are moving mm -hmm. forward. So so that's where we are. CP Ward should be out by uh, probably uh, before the end of the month. And I, I was update. part of yep, the absolutely. traffic diversion today. And it, was, <laughs> it was actually, it flowed uh -huh. quickly and nicely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they've done a nice job of uh, really trying to avoid the, uh, the initial uh, morning traffic right. and then be clear by Right. Uh, before the major uh, evening traffic, so yeah, and it keeps our equipment and our people off off, off the road. Not that I want to see CP Ward get hit or anybody hurt there, but it, it certainly is. Uh, they've they've got a little bit more expertise working on major four lane roads. Well, and the signage, as you mentioned, it clearly was yeah. a pretty yeah. big production yeah. even just today. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks. All thanks right. Uh, seeing no business, then. Uh, we will uh, adjourn the meeting at 8.04 p.m. Uh, thank you, Mr. Costello, Mr. Horowitz, uh, Ms. Grosser. Thank you very much. Good luck with that pool opening tomorrow. <laughs>